Chat, I haven't been keeping up with the Mr. Beast drama. I've been wanting to watch the Upper Echelon video with you guys, chat. So I can get an, an updated view on what's going on. So, uh, this video is two days old. He's a douche. I don't know. Last information I had was... He start or like at least the team started deleting videos on the uh, not videos uh, started deleting comments on the new video, so yeah, I don't know. I I'm going to find out. We're gonna watch. Hi YouTube. Hi YouTube. Hi YouTube. All right. Before you watch this, if you haven't already, mm -mm -mm. press pause. What I'm discussing today what? is. What? <laughs> predicated on ex-employee testimony from a man named Jake Weddle, who worked at Mr. Beast in 2019 and 2020, who has just now done a public interview about his experiences at the company, posted by Dogpack404. I'm going to link to both of their channels down below. But weren't things uh, in this video? Like, wasn't there a lot of deep and shit from this video? Like, what do you mean? Like, wasn't that video, like... A lot of the shit in the video in their debunked? Experiences at the company, posted by Dogpack404. I'm gonna link to both of their channels down below in the description, as well as that newest video, and I encourage everyone to go watch it. It's pretty powerful stuff. It contains a lot of very serious allegations, Dogpack and it's the basis put a new video out, right okay. Now, so it's a good thing to go watch that before you click resume. I'll do a short summary, of course, but that video has vocalized a few things that really need to be seen in proper context. So again, there's a new video from Dogpack404 uh, okay, interviewing okay, former okay. Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle, and it deserves to be seen. Okay, all assuming right. that all of you watching here forward have seen that video, I'm going to go out on a limb here and also assume that you'll fully understand why my tone is about to shift. The stuff oh. that this company has done is disgusting, and oh. I'm starting to hold a personal belief here that some degree of complicity is flat out required. Otherwise, we would never actually be in this horrible situation. I'll do oh, a short shit. form okay. summary here for those that need it, but I can't yeah, state this firmly enough. You need to watch the actual interview. It's rather emotional at times. It contains testimony I'll that people never too. received proper attention, and it raises serious questions about ethics and behavior. But yeah, here's a quick summary. Jake Weddle is a former Mr. Beast crew member and camera personality who participated in multiple skits and videos about four to five years ago. His role was somewhat secondary, taking part in pranks or challenges where he would directly fake his reactions and play into the jokes as best he could. But it okay, wasn't until fair. after he was let go from the company, let go because he attempted to negotiate better pay and benefits for himself and one other employee, that things got really bad. Jake was offered an opportunity that they pitched to him as some sort of easygoing luxury vacation type challenge where he would be spending 100 days okay. in isolation. He was told. That's crazy. I. That. One. Being isolated for a hundred days is really, really bad for the human psyche. They needed roughly 30 days to actually make the video, 30 days of footage, and he was chosen because he remained on relatively good standing with the company after departure. That's the game, by the way. Play nice, and maybe Jimmy gives you a chance to dance for the camera and shove a little money up your asshole, but. This challenge went decidedly horribly wrong. The video itself never got released because- Oh, so they actually did it? Wait, they actually- They actually did it, but- Well, the video never got released? the conditions they subjected him to were inhumane. For the sake of content, they put this man in a room with an ice cream machine and a hot tub and fluorescent lights with fresh paint, but they- Ooh. Oh, God. He didn't last 100 days, yeah. Of course he wouldn't. I mean, what I'm thinking here is that they offered this to him and he was able to accept or refuse fully knowing, at least hopefully fully knowing, what the consequences would be. Like, I would assume that the company would out a, put out a, uh, a contract and informing him, this and this and this is gonna happen. We gotta have professionals on standby, like therapists and like doctors and whatnot. Because otherwise, if nothing like this happened, that 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 would be insane. I would hope that this would should be done because I think within the last year, I think within the last year, Mr. Beast had put out a video, maybe two years ago. Within the last year, I think. 
Mr. Beast put out a video where he himself was isolated for quite some time. And there, didn't he state that he wouldn't do this to someone else or something? If I'm not Never turn the lights off. Never. The ice cream machine would either bombard him with never-ending noise or assault his sense of smell with mildew and dairy mold, while the hot tub Ew. began to stink very quickly because it was never hooked up to a proper filtration system. Small oh, what the fuck? you might say. Some of you definitely will say that in the comment section. But when losing access to the sun, Jake lost access to his circadian Vitamin rhythm. D. He experienced <laughs> Vitamin D. Vitamin D. Gun. Acute insomnia, which may even be the root cause for future insomnia that he then experienced. And with oh, no shit. access to clocks, he became the guy in the cage for content. Where Jimmy no would occasionally drop by either. and ask him to say things like, Thank you for the money. Now I can pay my student loans, okay. so he would appear more grateful for the camera. There's a lot of very, very personal testimony he gives, and honestly, I just wouldn't do it justice by summarizing, but the end result is that he would face a tremendous amount of pressure to conform. Mr. Beast was spending a ridiculous amount of money on the set. He was spending a ridiculous amount of money on the equipment and the labor, yeah, of course. all for the sake of a video, which would recoup those losses if it was entertaining enough, thereby yeah. leaving Jake as the one very human keystone point of failure in the media machine. The pressure to conform was palpable, even to a point where he was told that one of the smaller challenges was running a literal marathon on a treadmill, and he tried, to the detriment of his own body. What resulted is quite marathon. honestly tragic, but again, you should hear these things from him, not some other YouTuber summary. His testimony speaks to something a lot of us already felt in our bones, we just didn't have the evidence of it. Mr. Beast, in my opinion, is ruthlessly exploitative. But towards the end of the video, we get something else, something alarming, and something that happens to synchronize in one of the worst ways possible with prior revelations about Beast employee behavior. Jake Weddle, when asked about .pdf files at the company, if you know okay. what I mean, disclosed yeah. that a staff member named Delaware was actually a convicted... Uh, I'm not actually going to say it. I'll just show it on screen. Oh, no. I heard a tiny bit about Delaware. I'm not entirely sure what it is. What... what, what... What are we seeing here? What are we seeing here, chat? I don't- I'm not entirely sure. Registration information. That he was a felon? Or is a felon? Like... Out of state justice. Tier 2. Moderate risk. Like, description. Fourth the. Okay! Found it! Found it! Found it! Christ! The was between it's at the bottom! It's at the bottom! 1 and 11 years old. This Christ! is where it gets tricky. Between 1 and 11. Between 1 and 11. What do you mean between 1 and 11? My role here is not to witch hunt a specific employee of Mr. Beast who may not even work at the company anymore, though his address is still listed as Greenville, North Carolina in the registry, which is also where Beast Holdings LLC is located. The crime was committed 14 years ago. I'm not plastering his face and address all over a YouTube video at the height of what seems like online rage on the subject. If you wanted to find those details, you could. I'm not really able to deprive anyone of that outcome, but I'm certainly not gonna actively participate in it. However, fair. Very what fair. we learned from the Jake Weddle interview has pretty intense implications on a broader level, and that's where I wanna put my focus. This man, referred to as Delaware, is not actually named Delaware. It's his nickname, it's his because nickname he allegedly yeah. couldn't go back to the state of Delaware as a result of his crimes. Oh. However, Mr. Beast ah! allowed this man to not only be employed at the company, Why? but he psychologically targets and manipulates children, with children on set and frequently participating in videos. I mean... Maybe you don't know. I, I, I'm... I'm trying to be in good faith that maybe he just didn't know and didn't do a background check. Maybe? He also allowed this man to compete in challenges while wearing a mask as they gave him a new nickname, or should I say alias, Zorro. Bear with me. Why? During the I spent 24 hours straight in Insane Asylum video, in which Mr. Beast did not spend 24 hours in any such thing himself, Zorro is a main contestant. However, at 9 minutes and 12 seconds, Mr. Beast himself states, don't touch Delaware's cracker, during one of the joking what? meals that they were given. He's after my Why? What? Don't touch Delaware's cracker. Don't touch Delaware's cracker. That's...
Like, as in warning? Simple, innocuous slip presents a very big problem. If Jake Weddle's testimony is accurate, which I believe it is, having compared the height of Delaware, or Zorro, to that of Chandler, as well as eye color, hair color, weight, facial features, etc., it all checks out. If Jake Weddle's testimony is accurate, it means that not only was there a convicted offender working at Mr. Beast, convicted of explicit acts with a victim under the age of 11, by the way, but oh, 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 he just slipped his name out. His nickname okay. Okay, was the okay. state in which those crimes occurred, which Mr. Beast himself openly used, simultaneously allowing him to compete in challenges with a mask on, presumably to hide his identity, under yet another alias, seemingly to obfuscate who he was. See the problem? It's a complicated situation, but I want to make something very clear. I am not the arbiter of who should and shouldn't be allowed to find work or employment. I don't know the full extent of the situation, but I don't think that someone with a known and joked about criminal past of that nature should be a notable person of authority and influence on a YouTube channel with tens of millions of underage followers at the time that targets oh and psychologically exploits children deliberately as their primary audience demographic. That seems like a bad fit. And I felt kind of bad, so I invited them to our warehouse. And surprisingly, they followed me. Don't follow strangers, kids. Just to emphasize this, working at Mr. Okay. Beast makes you a celebrity to children. You have fans, underage fans, by nature of the very job itself. Especially you know, if you participate yeah, like, on... Yeah, like, Mr. Beast himself said he knows that there are a lot of underage viewers. This, Delaware this participated knows. on camera. And this is where we need to connect the dots and use our context adult brains. Because this no longer appears, in my opinion to be a simple case where the employer has no idea about the background of the employee and therefore can't really be held accountable for them as a proxy. Combine all of that with a propensity for the secret deletion of evidence, combine it with the Ava Chris Tyson scandal, combine it with everything else we've come to understand over the past few weeks, and I see something that is quite frankly horrifying. Circling back to my original point, if the world's largest influencer, he wasn't the largest at the time of all this, I suppose, but still tens of millions of followers and viral content every single time he posted, if one of the world's largest influencers is employing a man whose nickname is the state he can't go back to because of that particular type of crime, while the influencer jokingly uses that nickname, allows him to wear a mask on set with a code name of Zorro, and that influencer's best friend undergoes a viral scandal over the course of weeks which involves controversial behavior in a Discord server with minors, a Discord server with the influencer who might also be a part of that, by the way, what exactly am I supposed to think here? What is a reasonable conclusion it's to draw? Re I've heard from a really, source that really I have not verified look. completely as of just yet, full disclosure, claiming that Mr. Beast is directly hiring private investigators to find dirt on the people criticizing him. And while that's mostly relegated to a few central figures, what the fuck? he's allegedly doing this for the purpose of character assassination. If we start seeing crazy stuff come out now about everyone out there who's calling his media empire into question, well, in my mind, that'd be pretty telling because so far the avenue available to him the avenue where he just fucking apologizes and makes me said he can't go back to his false information he's from delaware that's why it's his nickname that's what i heard about too like that's the that's the what the, but that's the lower reason for his nickname too that's what i heard too that's why i was a little bit surprised about how he said uh, uh this year meaningful changes to the predatory structure of his company seems to be the only avenue He's completely unwilling to go down. In Dogpack 404's video interviewing Jake Weddle, he read a particular paragraph from a document called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Productions, titled No Does fuck? Not Mean No, which is a <laughs> wild thing to Excuse you what? Wait, excuse you what? Who wrote that? <laughs> He's completely unwilling to go down. In Dogpack 404's video interviewing Jake Weddle, he read a particular paragraph from a document called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Productions, titled No Does Not Mean No, which is a wild thing to have as corporate policy, emphasizing the intense pressure that contestants like Weddle would be subjected to routinely, and how the company chooses to build its own atmosphere. However, having been given access to that document for myself, I wanted to read a different paragraph. Quote, okay. Own your mistakes. I hate okay. excuses and I despise with my entire soul when people just try to save face instead of learn from how they messed up. Mistakes are okay. Genuinely, they Fair. are, and I expect you to make a lot. That's perfectly fine. Every veteran here has cost me a million dollars at one point or another, and you can go ask them yourself if I ever held it over their heads. 
from what I'm understanding so far in the context given is that Mr. Beast wrote, wrote this himself. The reason I'm okay with mess ups is because I know that's how you learn. I see it as me investing in you and your brain. Hence why I have zero tolerance for C players and they must go immediately. Those mess ups could be done by an A player that will retain the information learned. I just beg you that you learn from every mistake and try not to repeat it. That's when it gets annoying. I've never, ever, ever once fired someone on the spot for messing up. You have nothing to be afraid of. Own stuff so we can address how to fix it and then move on." End quote. Those appear to be the words of Jimmy Donaldson, Mr. Beast himself, and I think it's more than fair to say them back to him now. Yeah, here. Hi, I'm Jimmy, Mr. Beast, and as the team is growing larger, I no longer get to spend as much time with everyone as I used to. Own your mistakes. Despising with your entire soul when people just try to save face instead of learning from how they messed up is fundamentally incompatible with the mass deletion of evidence regarding alleged illegal lottery streams, which the Mr. Beast social media team appears to be actively doing right now. Owning your mistakes does not mean manipulation of footage or lying about the competitive nature of your videos, and it certainly doesn't mean obfuscating the identity of a convicted registry offender so that they can work for a child-focused media company. The document contains very strong words from leadership, and I would hope that leadership can also abide by them. Own it. End of the day, I don't know where it all leads because the snowball isn't done rolling yet. There's more, not from me, mind you, more from the veritable army of non-disclosure-bound employees who up till now played nice for the sake of protecting their careers. YouTube's golden boy got very big and very powerful, but that only works when the armor you build is impenetrable, and right now, there is stuff piercing the armor. Again, me personally, I have a very small part to play here. I watch, I summarize, and I offer opinions on the much appreciated bravery of company whistleblowers who are taking it upon themselves to expose and potentially dismantle the predatory media empire of the Ooh, world's yeah, largest yeah. influencer. It's a heck of a story so far, and it's a heck of a story going forward. I guess we'll find out where it all leads. Do make sure to check out Jake Weddle, the original Dog Pack video, and subscribe to both of them as well. But for right now, that's it. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. A special VPN deal, big discount there, merchandise, Patreon, and locals, monthly memberships, and more. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching. Question everything, and have a nice night. This is insane. If Mr. Beast actually knew all of this, man, what? I'm still trying to hope that. Like, I'm still trying to hold on to hope that it's worse than it seems right now. That does work with regular cheddar. I think it just has a cooldown. Try again. Try again. Um. I'm actually shocked, so am I. Oh. <laughs> so. I'm still trying to hope, but uh, to hold on to the hope that somehow, in some way, Mr. Beast just didn't know that he just didn't know that he was just oblivious because he is hella young. Mr. Beast is just hella young. He started out, Mr. Beast started out as your know, average, no name YouTuber and just kind of blew up over and over and over time by just pushing out content and by showing like by spending big money to make more money i i am trying to hold on the hope that he is just somehow that he went in over his head in some way yeah, he didn't just accidentally blow up. No, that is true. He did not. He put out content. Why, in my opinion, he is kind of calculating nearly impossible. He didn't know. I don't really agree much with cancel culture, but it's bullshit how those... How may actually be dangerous get to stick around while those who are more benign or even innocent get attacked just due to their size and connections. I very much agree with this. I very much agree with this. That if 
Mr. Beast never addresses anything of this and just continues to put out content, children will keep watching him. Children will keep watching him and he will keep making ad money. He will continue to keep, to keep making money if he never addresses this. If he just continues to put out that stuff, yes, uh, his videos are getting dislikes, but dislikes are still engagement. Dislikes are still engagement. There's absolutely no way he didn't know. I really don't know. <sighs> At this point, the avocado animation video will come true. The one where he blows up the world? Most cats don't even know that they can make this, like, it's visible. Yeah, yeah. They'll watch it on their phone or on the TV or on their iPads. They will never see the dislikes. Ludwig also talked about it, but man, it was cringy as fuck. There's a Ludwig video, that's true. There's a Ludwig video. 